Welcome to today's 26 minutes Dakar. In the bikes, Koma has to really push, but just how much time can he make up? And what about the cars? How will Pella Hansel cope with the monster dunes of Nazca? In stories, we take a look back at 24 hours when Fesh Fesh once again played hell with the late part of the rally. And in Dakar people, we travel a day in Dakar boss Etienne Levine's shoes and see what he gets up to. And in Dakar legend, we head to Mauritania in 2005, where Fesh Fesh again and wind stretch competitors to the very edge. All the news, all the action, all the beauty, and it's all new 26 minutes Dakar, our keeper to Nazca. Just three days left of the 2012 Dakar, and it's as close as ever. Coma got lost early on, but then Dupre got stuck in the mud to bring the gap back down to 2 minutes and 22 seconds. At three wins all, it's one of the most intense duels in Dakar history. Oh, Jules and Mark have always been intense. We have the same machine. We're going at the same speed. Coma will have the advantage today. His objective is clear. We came in a fight until the end and to try and win. And that's what we'll do. We're going to try to the very end. Just 600 kilometers of racing to go after 37 hours flat out. Coma starts two bikes ahead of Dupre, but who could possibly take victory? Last night was the first time since 2007 that bikers had a separate, solitary bivouac set out on a football pitch in Kamena. No assistance was allowed, which meant no change of clothes, and the bikes would carry any damage incurred on the day stage. Riders were handled a small comfort pack with socks, a hat, and some sexy smocks to sport in the evening. But Coma was on the hunt for a new rear tyre, having damaged his too much during the day. Gionesto a story obliged and soon the two wheels were swapped. However, it soon became clear that the Italian had problems with his and it was missing two spokes. Mission failed and time for some sleep. At a time when most Dakars will be winding down, the 200 km test to Nazca has been modified but will still be one of the toughest on the rally with the dunes bigger than anyone has ever seen since Mauritania. La stratégie pour avoir pour être une bonne stratégie. To have a good strategy. You've got to keep it to yourself, and so you can't tell anyone, so you're not going to know. Cyril Dupre was keeping everything to himself as he headed off the leading bike on the day's stage. It was a spectacular stage as well. With a 2 minutes and 22 second gap, he headed into the dunes with only his roadbook to guide him, knowing Coma behind would be following his tracks at a faster pace and catching him up. It was a spectacular ride down the beach before heading back into the massive Peruvian dunes. Mark Coma was following, and at first, not much faster than Dupre. It was less spectacular for the stars of stage 11. Johnny Aubert, who was finished fourth on yesterday's stage, was still getting used to the navigation of his first Dakar, and he got lost on the beach. The other star of stage 11, Bereda, is also basically a rookie, having only competed one stage last year. And having been passed after 10 kilometers by Coma, he then also got lost on the beach. 
He fought back to take second on the stage, however, just two minutes and 43 seconds from Mark Comer. He was one of the first to discover Peruvian dunes and flew through them with great pace. Third today, and an engine change on the Yamaha yesterday, had dropped Cordy Villadoms to fifth overall. But with this good performance on stage 12, he's taken back fourth from Stefan Svitko, who is riding with an injury. So, by the end of the stage, Cyril Depré and Coma once again arrived together. There was no more that the Frenchman could have done. He rode flat out, but with no guide, he just wasn't fast enough. And now I have no regrets. I pushed on the first half of the stage. And I really have to try on this Dakar. I'm, I'm fighting with a great rider. Of course, he's called Marc Coma. And it's not easy. He's fast and clever. And I'll try and find a good rhythm for the following few days. So, as expected, it was Coma's stage. On the early part, he wasn't making much progress. Too little speed in relation to Dupre. But in the deep dunes on the last 50 kilometers of the stage, Comma let the KTM fly and caught Cyril to take the stage by four minutes and the lead of the rally by one minute and 35 seconds. I knew at the end of the stage with the sun in the sky, without any tracks, it would be so hard for Cyril. Very, very demanding. I had a good rhythm and I knew I was catching him with no problems. For Helder Rodriguez, it was a quiet day, the sort of performance you expect to see from him in week one. He took seventh, seven minutes down, but stays safely in third position overall. So confirmation of the stage results, Coma ahead of Bereda, Villadoms, which means Dupre will start fourth tomorrow, and Consalves in fifth position. In the overall, you can see Coma's taken that lead back over Dupre, Rodriguez holds on to third, Villadoms up to fourth, Svit to go down to fifth. And to the quads. Marcus Patronelli was the winner today by just one minute ahead of his brother. It seemed pretty straightforward for the four-wheel machines. Alejandro Patronelli, who leads the rally overall by well over an hour, was second and ten minutes ahead of any nearest rival. It's going to be a Patronelli domination by the time they get to Lima. Fourth in the general standings today, but behind Sonic, who is not a classified runner, was Thomas Maffaye. He was 20 minutes back and now slips to over an hour behind the Patronellis. He should be safe, though, in third. Coming next in the cars, Stefan Paderhansel and Nanny Roma hit the dunes of NASCAR. Who will come out on top? Chile or Peru? They're different countries, but it's been the same story on the Dakar. We call it Fesh Fesh, Dust or Guadal. It made yesterday extremely demanding for man and machine.
Dusty today. I don't know how come. 